I can start, you think? Okay, so. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon everyone. I warmly welcome everyone here to my PhD defense. Before we start, I would like to thank all members of jury, uh, especially uh, my thesis director, my co-supervisors, and everyone uh, who had made a key role in making this PhD defense possible. So in the next few minutes, I will tell you about the research I've done during my PhD, which is based on the optimized management of active distribution networks using AMAS combined with the Pandit RL method. This will be the outline. I will start by defining the problem that I've studied during the thesis. Then we will look individually at what is the adaptive multi-agent system theory and what is the combinatorial multi abandon theory. Then we, see, then we will see how we combine both of them for an application for smart grids and then eventually we will conclude the presentation. So let's start with the introduction. To understand the problem that we have uh, studied in this thesis, we first have to look at the changes that we have seen in recent years in the distribution sites. We see that there is an arrival of electrical vehicles and photovoltaics, which is being connected to our households. And this number is only predicted to be increased in the future, which is a good thing because we will have greener energy. But there is another side of this uh, change as well. These changes, they can have in, an impact on the distribution network. For example, the electrical vehicles, um, as you can see, we have two graphs here. The graph on the, on the left, it shows the peak of a normal household, household demand. And you can see there is a peak of this demand during evening hours. Now, if these households, they have EVs, then the peak of charging the EVs, it can coincide with, uh, with the demand of, the, uh, of a simple household, which can, which can cause instability in the power systems. On the other hand, we have photovoltaics, and as you can see, the stability of the network, it can also be compromised because of photovoltaics, because it's really hard to predict, and there can be mismatches compared to the forecast in real time, which can compromise the stability of the network. Possibility of curtailment as well, but this energy, it can go to waste because we need to ensure the stability of the network. Furthermore, we have to ensure that the grid, it remains stable in real life. That means production is more or less equal to consumption which may be difficult if we have uh, these errors in the forecast. Now, how, how can we solve this problem? The first solution can obviously, obviously be the grid reinforcement. We can strengthen the, our power systems to make sure that they can withstand these changes. But it can be extremely expensive, and it can take a lot of time as well. On the other hand, we can control flexible entities of the grid. For example, electrical vehicle, it, it, we, we call it a flexible entity because we can control charging and discharging of these type of elements in our power grids. And we can, so we can, the second method is we can control the charging and discharging to make sure that the stability of the grid, it remains satisfied. And how we do that? We basically, we can do that uh, through optimization. So we can perform optimized charge control of electrical vehicles. This optimization, it can be of different types, depends on the architecture. The classical one is the centralized architecture, where we have just this one node, which is gathering information from all different elements or entities in the network and performing optimization for all of them. It can have potential drawbacks. For example, the scalability. Uh, if you want to implement such a solution, which is able to optimize a very large scale system in real time, then the scalability, scalability of such a system, it's a big question. We can have data privacy concerns as well, because all these different entities, all of these different P, uh, household owners, they have to send their private data to a, some centralized entity, which can be problematic. There can be a single point of failure. What happens if this single node, this, this single decision-making road, it fails? What happens to the system? On the flip side, we have decentralized system, where there is no single entity making decision for everyone, but rather all different elements or we also call them agents, they, they coordinate with each other to make decision for the system as a whole. So they, as a whole, try to optimize this system. This type of architecture, it can have some pros. For example, the scalability, uh, it may provide scalability to the system. The privacy of the system, it can also remain intact in such a system because all of these different entities, they do not have to share their private information necessarily with all different other entities in the system. There, can, uh, there may not be a single point of failure in such a system as well. But a potential con for such a system can be it may not be very easy to design a decentralized system which provides near optimal or optimal solutions. So it can be a challenge, and that's exactly the challenge we have studied in, in this thesis. 
Now there can be a number of questions related to the application of uh, decentralized architecture for smart grid control. For example, how can be a fully decentralized multi-agent system can be designed for smart grids? What would be the optimality of such a system? We call we say that they may provide scalability, but what is the, actually the potential for scalability of such a system compared to a classical centralized system? How would such system perform under stochasticity? These are some of the questions that we have tackled in this thesis. But nonetheless, there are other questions as well, which can be good perspectives, such as what would be the impact of asynchronicity in the communication between all different agents in the system? How can the total implementation cost of the system can be optimized? Because we have a number of agents in the system, and if we have a very large number of agents in the system, then it may affect the implementation cost of the system. And we can also improve the performance of the system under real life conditions. Now the question that is being studied in this thesis, these are already studied in the literature as well. Here are some of the references which study the same problem and the difference between the, the potential difference between the mentioned references and uh, the research that I have done in this thesis is we combine two different, two new methodologies, the, uh, AMAS and CMAP, we combine these methodologies for designing an optimization system which is able to optimize a large scale power systems in real time and we also consider stochasticity in the system. Now all the research that has been done during the thesis, it has been published in uh, a number of international conferences and uh, peer reviewed journals and the code that have been developed during this thesis to test, uh, the, uh, to test the developed algorithms, they are public as well. Now, we, after this introduction, we can move toward what is actually an adaptive multi-agent system. So an adaptive multi-agent system is basically a multi-agent system. So for that, we need to study what is a multi-agent system. So multi-agent system, it can naturally be designed to be a decentralized system. And in this decentralized system, we have a number of agents. These different agents, they are interacting with each other, they are coordinating with each other, sharing information with each other to optimize the system. These agents, they can have different characteristics. For example, they can be autonomous, they can be decentralized, they can react to their situation, and they can be scalable and social as well as they are communicating with other agents in the system. Now, that's a simple multi-agent system, but multi-agent system, it can have different types as well. For example, an agent, agents, they can coordinate with each other. That's a, part, that's a, that's a class of multi-agent system. The agents, they can compete with each other as well. That's another class of multi-agent system. And here in the thesis, we study adaptive multi-agent system. So adaptive multi-agent system is a special variant of multi-agent system where the goal is achieved through cooperative interaction among all agents in the system, which is also known as self, strong self-organization or emergence. Now, a key difference here is that instead of defining the functional uh, specification of the system as a whole, we only define the behavior, uh, behavioral definition of the agents. And each of these agents, they, uh, they go through three stages. The first one is the perception, where they perceive information from the environment. Then they make decision based on the perception, and then they make an action based on the decision made. And the methodology is basically each of, this, uh, each of the uh, agent in the system, they try to uh, satisfy its own objective or try to cooperate with the other agent in the system based on the comparison of criticality. So each agent, it has a criticality value, they share this criticality value with the neighboring agents in the system, and they compare their criticality values with each other. And they try to optimize the system in, in a way that uh, the goal of the whole system is satisfied. Now we have, uh, we have implemented a rule-based system for smart grids in the, in, the, in the manuscript. Because of the time constraint, the detail of such a system is, uh, is, is not completely specified here, but it's present in chapter two of the thesis manuscript. The objective of such a system was to minimize the real-time grid energy mismatch, and the constraints, obviously, we wanted to make sure that the network is stable, uh, the presumers, their constraints are satisfied, and physical flaws of the network, obviously, they, they are according to the physical constraints. And the performance of such a system is also assessed in the chapter three of the manuscript. Now, so there are some key findings of this implementation. The first key finding was in terms of scalability. We saw, we saw that the rule-based AMA system that we have uh, developed, it proposes a great potential in terms of scalability. Here you can see we have two graphs. Uh, the graph on the left, it's for 
the time required to obtain the solution for different kind of systems. Here we have centralized system, which we say uh, a MILP system, and we have decentralized AMA system as well. And uh, we can see that if we have very small number of agents in the system, then maybe centralized, uh, centralized system, it performs uh, well compared to uh, AMA system when we are simulating uh, these scenarios. But as we have more and more agents in the system, then the complexity of an AMA, uh, uh, an AMA system is much lower in terms of time required to obtain the solution compared to a centralized MILP. And we have the same um, observation if we observe the memory required to obtain these solutions as well. So we conclude that uh, the rule-based AMAS, it proposes a great potential in terms of scalability. But uh, we, we, we observe some other information as well. For example, related to the cost optimality, we, we uh, performed pseudo-stochastic uh, pseudo studies, so we ran different number of scenarios and we knew the optimal solution based on the deterministic centralized solution, and we compared the solution of the AMAS to that deterministic centralized solution. And we saw that the, there is still a gap between the centralized solution, which can be the, an optimal, and the solution we obtain from the AMAS. But uh, uh, a more important uh, observation, I would say, is in terms of constraints, because we wanted to make sure that the system, it remains stable. But as you can see, in, in when we use the AMAS, decentralized AMA system, the constraints, they were violated in a number of simulation scenarios. So, we, uh, so uh, during this part, we concluded that anticipative capabilities, they were lacking in the a AV agents of the system. So these capabilities, they can be implemented so the system so it can be improved as a whole. So after that, we, we moved toward combinatorial multi-arm bandits. So combinatorial multi-arm bandit, to understand that, we need to understand what is a simple multi-arm bandit, basically. So in a simple multi-arm bandit setting, there is an agent, and the agent is trying to find the best action, or arm, we also call that, with the highest expected reward from the set of available actions, or arms, with unknown distribution. So, the, so during uh, this process, the agent it goes through a dilemma of exploration, where it can try loosely estimated action, versus exploitation, where it can try the already best estimated action. So multi-arm bandit class of algorithms, they handle this dilemma. And the goal of multi-arm bandit algorithms uh, of an agent in such a setting is basically to minimize its regret, which we can define as a difference of uh, the maximum uh, reward that the agent could have obtained by playing the best action in all round uh, by the actual reward it has obtained. And a potential advantage of such algorithms can be uh, faster convergence compared to other prominent RL algorithms, for example, DQN learning, especially when there is no, orac no perfect oracle present. No, that, that was ju just a simple multi-arm balance system. But where the agent it was picking only one action or arm. But there can be a situation where the agent it is allowed to pick a combination of actions or arms and in such a setting, the goal of the agent would be to find the best combination which would give the agent the highest expected reward. And in such a setting, each action which is picked by the agent, it's known as the base arm, and the selected combination of actions, it's known as a super arm. Now, combinatorial multi-arm bandit, it can be used to tackle combinatorial optimization problem, which are a non-deterministic polynomial in nature, and uh, the advantage of such an algorithm can, over classically used brute force algorithms can be the in a CMAP setting, the agent it is utilizing feedback from the environment. Now, as we, as, as we just discussed, we need to optimize the charging or discharging of the EVs, and which is generally uh, modeled as an uh, as a combinatorial optimization problem as well. So based on that, we, we, we make a conclusion that combinatorial multi-arm bandit can be utilized to integrate anticipative capabilities in the agents. Now before we move towards combining adaptive multi-agent system and combinatorial multi-arm bandit uh, together for smart grid application, I would like to present uh, the chronology of, uh, of, of the conclusion, of the prominent conclusion we made during the thesis so you better understand why we are actually moving towards uh, combining both of these uh, methodologies. So during the beginning of the thesis, we work on 
a simple rule-based adaptive multi-agent system where there were no learning capabilities in the system. And we drew a con conclusion that anticipative capabilities, they can be actually implemented in the EV agent to improve their behavior and the stochasticity. So th we, we did a brief work on the combinatorial multi-arm bandits to see if they can uh, be applied to smart grid problems. And we concluded that the con combinatorial multi-arm bandit, they can be utilized to uh, integrate anticipative capabilities that were lacking in the previously designed uh, rule-based adaptive multi-agent system. And that leads to the work which I'm just going to present you, which is the combination of both for decentralized optimization of smart grids. Now, before we uh, we see this, the final system that we have uh, that we have designed, I would like to mention uh, that previously I presented to you for Amas. I presented you our smart grid problem where we studied the real time uh, grid balancing problem. We switched to a relatively simpler problem because the viability of combinatorial multi arm bandit for decentralized smart grid control applications is, is was still lesser known at the time when I was doing this research. But yet the problem was still complex because we, in the problem we considered the constraints of the distribution system operators, of the presumers. We wanted to minimize the cost of all the presumers in the system and also we wanted to ensure fairness when, while performing this decentralized optimization. So this problem, it was still complex enough. So the problem we studied, it was um, a smart charging problem. So in the problem, uh, as you can see in the graph, there can be a peak load demand which may violate the constraints and lead to instability of the grid. And what we wanted to do, we wanted to control the charging or discharging of these electrical vehicles to ensure that the network, it remains stable. And we wanted to perform this control in a decentralized manner. A key assumption that we made uh, during uh, this, uh, during developing this uh, this methodology, was that the energy which is generated from the PVs which are present in the power systems, it can be utilized at a lower cost from the electrical grid or at a zero cost, which may happen in energy communities. Now, this was just uh, the definition of what we were studying. We can translate it, it into mathematical formulation as well. Here we have the centralized formulation where you can see this is the objective function of what I just described. It consists of two parts mainly. The first part is the minimization of daily EV charging cost. And the second part is the minimization of fairness. We have this fairness term because as we have a decentralized system, we want to ensure that all of the presumer in the system, they pay more or less daily average charging cost. And the average charging and the charging cost of each EV owner, it's basically the product of uh, instantaneous uh, charging of their EVs and by the electricity instantaneous price. Now we have constraints in the system as well. The first class of constraints is related to distribution system operators. We want to ensure that the distribution network, it remains stable. That means that uh, the electri electrical current through each line at each instant, it should remain below a certain limit the vol instantaneous voltage, it should also remain within certain bounds as well. And we have presumer constraints as well, where we ensure that the set, uh, that uh, it's related to the state of charge and state of health of the presumer, and we ensure that the state of charge, it remains within a certain bound, so the electrical, uh, electrochemical decay of the battery, it's, it can be minimized. And also, at the time of departure of the EV, it's above a certain threshold, so the EV owner, it can have a smooth journey. We have physical power flow constraints as well in the system, uh, which relates uh, power flows in, in, in different line. A key observation here is that uh, in the last equation where we have relation between voltages and power flows in the network, it's non-linear because as you can see, we have product of voltages. So what we can do, we can move towards linearizing uh, this, uh, th this non-linear equation. For that, we may make uh, some assumption. The first one is obviously the small scale assumption, which is a common assumption by linearizing uh, such nonlinear equation. But another key assumption that, that is usually made is that conductance is negligible. But uh, in our thesis, we did not consider that the conductance is negligible as we are working on the distribution networks. So in the final equation that we have, we have relationship bet uh, between voltages, angles, and powers as well in the system. So that was a, a centralized system. And now we can look at the decentralized counterpart. So for the decentralized system, we propose that we can design a system by combining AMAS and CMAP theory. 
And in such a system, we say that different type of electrical uh, grid elements, they can be modeled as different type of agents in the system. For example, uh, a line of an electrical network, it can be modeled as a line agent. And the goal of such, a, such an agent will be to ensure that the line is not congested. And the bus agent, uh, it is there to ensure that the voltage limits of, the, of each bus in the network it's not violated, the PV agent, it is just there to communicate its instantaneous PV generation data to all EVs in the system so that they can learn. And the EV agent, which is the key agent in the system, its goal is to minimize its daily charging cost while satisfying a desired set of constraints, which we just saw earlier. Um, it would be interesting to mention that as we are using an RL system, so we have to define what, what agents belong to the environment and what agents are the learning agents. So in, this, in, the, in the proposed system, uh, we use the classical framework of reinforcement learning where we have an environment and a learning agent. The environment, it consists of uh, rule-based agent, so it consists of line agent and bus agent, which are modeled as just rule-based agent in the system. And they are there to reflect the state of the network. So how do they do that? By sharing their criticality value with the agents. So if they share a criticality value of zero with the learning EV agent, that, that means they are saying there is no congestion in the network. But if they say a criticality value of non-zero, let's say minus one or one, then there is some congestion in the network. And EV, has, EV agent, it has to learn through this criticality value. And again, PV agent is there just to communicate its generation data to all EVs. As you, we can see here, the PV agent is only communicating its PV generation data, so it does not have any criticality value. But we have line agent, which is there to ensure that the uh, line current, it remains below some certain limit. So it is there to ensure there is no congestion in the system. So it has a criticality value, and this criticality value, it ranges between minus one and one. And as we just saw, the criticality value, if it's non-zero, then there is some congestion in the system. And we have these two different values of minus one and one because it uh, represent different scenarios in the system. For example, if the criticality value is negative one, that it, then it indicates that there is a congestion in the system, but because of high export of current. On the other hand, if the criticality value is one, then it indicates that there is a congestion in the system, but because of high import from the grid. And when there is a congestion happening in the system, then this critical agent, it selects um, a number of EV agents to receive a grid, grid criticality, which we say here a criticality of zero, and it picks these it picks these EV agents through uniform sampling. We do this uniform sampling to ensure that there is fairness in the system. And then we have bus agent, and the bus agent is there to ensure there is no bus congestion. Its criticality value also ranges between negative one and one, and they indicate different scenarios in the system. There can be under voltage and over voltage. And our key observation here is that we give priority to solving line congestion. And why we give this priority? Because um, as you can see, we have two type of agents in the network. We have line agents and bus agents, but we are generating only a single criticality value to give to the learning EV agent. So we need some sort of coordination among these agents if we want to just transfer one criticality value. And for that, we use this model where line agents, it transfers its criticality value to the bus agent, and then the bus agent, it then eventually transfer the final environmental criticality value. So that's why we need coordination. And I would like to keep uh, in mind this environmental criticality value, this variable, because it is an important variable. It will come again um, in, in, in after next two slides, because this variable, it is the variable which is utilized by EV agent to learn from the environment. So for the EV agent, as we saw that they lack cap anticipative capabilities in a simple rule-based AMAS. And the goal of each EV agent here in such a setting is to pick a number of, a combination of instances during the day to charge from the grid, which will minimize its daily charging costs, but also ensure that the system, it remains stable. So we uh, formulate such a setting uh, here where we divide each day into M number of instances and there is an EV agent that is charging. And if we, have so, uh, if we have such a very simple system, then it's all right because there's only one agent in the system and it is charging. But if we have more than one agent in the system, then it can become problematic because these agents, as we have a decentralized system, then the selection of charging instances of one agent, they are unknown to other agents in the system. 
and it can be problematic in a scenario when all of all agents in the system they try to charge at the same instant which can happen let's say when the electricity price is the lowest during the day so they all can start to charge at the same instant which can cause congestion in the network so for that we use combinatorial multi arm bandit and through that each ev agent learning each ev agent it is learning to tackle uncertainty in this decentralized environment and here is the formulation of such a system. We, you, as you can see, we divide each day into M instances, which, is, which are also known as base arms in the combinatorial multi-arm balance setting. And the goal of each EV agent is to pick a combination of charging uh, instances, which is also known as a super arm in the uh, combinatorial multi-arm balance setting from these available M base arms to charge from the grid. So what happens is that during each of, each of these M instances during the day, the EV agent, it is going to decide if it wants to charge from the grid or not. So, and what happens? Each EV agent, it picks instances and then it uh, charges or not charges at those instances. And based on this, the, the made decision by the EV, it observes an environmental criticality. It's the same variable that we just saw a couple of slides ago. So. The, stay, the, the impact of the action of each EV, it is reflected in this environmental criticality variable that each EV observes from its environment. The reward of this learning EV agent, it is defined in this way, where if the environmental criticality, it's, non, it's non-zero, so that means that the environment, it's non-stable, there is congestion in the system, then the reward of the EV agent, it depends on the criticality that it observes from the environment. So wh what is happening here is that if the action of uh, an EV agent, it is making an, uh, the environment congested, then the, EV agent, the reward of the EV agent, it is depending on the criticality that is observed from the environment. But in case if the action of the EV agent, it is not making the environment congested, then its reward depends on the cost, the electricity cost. And this observed reward in the, in the design of each EV agent, it is related to the unknown vector theta. And here, a key uh, assumption we make during developing this algorithm is there is a linear relationship between this unknown vector theta, which is related to the reward, and the superarm, which is basically the combination of charging instances picked by the each EV to charge during the day. And the goal of each EV agent is basically to learn this unknown uh, theta vector, which would minimize its expected regret. And how do we do that? Basically, there can be different type of methodologies to learn this unknown vector. One of the methodologies that we study in the thesis is the Thompson sampling, which is a type of Bayesian learning algorithm. And what happens in this Bayesian learning algorithm is that we start with the prior assumption. So we make some uh, uh, prior uh, hypothesis and make actions based on this prior hypothesis and observe new information from the environment. And based on this new observation, we update our prior hypothesis. And then this uh, process, it repeats. So that's how the agent, it learns the value of the unknown vector. It's uh, crucial to mention that we, ha we, uh, we have another vector, phi, in the system, which represents the estimated value of PV generation by each agent during each instant of the day. So each EV agent, it is also learned, it's, it is also trying to estimate the trend of PV during the day so that it can optimize its daily charging cost. As I said, it is one of the strategies to learn uh, the unknown vector. There are other strategies as well, which can be UCB based or EXP3 based. And these strategies, they are discussed in the thesis as well. And here is the algorithm of a learning EV agent. And what is happening here, basically? So for each day, an EV agent, it, it, it estimates the reward. So what it, it is doing is, during each day, it estimates, okay, what will happen if I will charge during this instant of the upcoming day? Then for each instant, it makes a decision. It picks a policy of charging during the day. We are, uh, we are doing this at each instant because it gives the, the EV agent opportunity to update its policy during each instant of the day. The EV agent, it could have picked this charging policy at the beginning of the day as well, but then it would have been the same policy throughout the day. But if we may, if we, allow the agent to update this policy during each instant of the day, then it increases uh, the, then it may increase the performance of the system. 
So each EV agent, it picks a combination of instances to charge from the grid, and then it charges from the grid during those instances, and then it observes information from the environment. This information is basically about the criticality value. So if the EV is charging, what is happening to the system, if it is being congested or not. And it is also observing information related, related to the PV generation data, which it is utilizing to optimize its charging cost. And then based on this uh, uh, observed information, at the end of the day, it is updating its, its parameters, which will allow it next day to make better estimations. And here is the implementations of both system. For the centralized system, it is implemented as a mixed integer linear programming optimization problem, which is solved in Python. The decentralized system, it is also implemented in Python. So we have the developed uh, combinatorial multi-arm bandit bait adop adoptive multi-agent system. It communicates with Panda Power to perform load flow. And here is uh, basically how the system architecture, it has been designed. So we utilize both of these developed systems to perform uh, simulation studies to study the, perform the performances of the system. We do two different types of simulation studies. I say different types because we use different sizes of the network. One is the small scale and one is the large scale. We use the large scale study because we wanted to uh, basically see what is the impact of scalability uh, for, the, for, the, for, for the developed system. So the small scale system, it consists of only 55 EV agents in the system. And the large scale system, it consists of more than 10,000 EVs in the system. And each EV agent, it is making decision for each instant of the day. We compare four charging strategies here. Uh, first one is the uncontrolled charging strategy, where the charging of the EVs, they are not controlled, and we call it upper bound strategy. Then we uh, use the centralized strategy as a lower bound because we solve the problem as a deterministic problem. We use this lower bound to assess the optimality of our decentralized system because we want to see where does it stand in terms of its optimality. The proposed decentralized system, we further divide it into two different strategies. The first strategy is the strategy where we enforce that the PV agents, they do not make any PV estimation. We do this because we want to see what is the impact on the, on the performance of the system if the EV agents are making or not being, making uh, PV estimation. And the performance, it's compared in terms of optimality. So we see the cost optimality of the system. We see the constraint satisfaction, if all the previously stated constraints, they are satisfied or not. And we also see the fairness, because it's a decentralized system, and the fairness is an important aspect here. We want our system to be fair among all agents in the system. And here are the results for the small scale case study, uh, for, the, for, for the learning strategies, which, is, which are the proposed decentralized strategy. We have uh, these convergence graphs. These are two different graphs because the first one on the top, it's, for, it's the graph for the scenario where the AV agents, they are not making any PV estimation. And the second one, it's, the, it's for the scenario where the agents, they are making PV estimation. And a key thing to observe here is that when the agents, they are making PV estimation, uh, we see faster convergence comparatively. This is because uh, when the agents, they have PV, free PV energy uh, to utilize, then it becomes a relatively simpler optimization problem for the agents to solve. But when they do not have PV energy to estimate, then there are limited number of uh, charging slots where the electricity prices are low during the day, which, which makes this optimization problem a little bit more difficult for the agents. And here are the results for the small scale case study after the training is complete. So after the training, the next 30 days, we use them for evaluation. The key observation here uh, is that the constraints, they are only violated if we use uncontrolled charging strategy. If we use optimization based charging strategies, both centralized and decentralized, then these constraints, they are not, uh, they are not uh, violated. And if we look at the optimality gap, we say here optimality gap because we treat the centralized deterministic as, uh, uh, as a reference here. We say this is the optimal solution we could have obtained because we solve the centralized problem as a deterministic problem. And we can see the optimality gap, it's highest if we follow an uncontrolled charging strategy. But if we switch to a decentralized strategy without making PV estimation, this optimality gap is lowered. But if, we, if the EV agents, they are making PV estimation as well, 
then this optimality gap is much, much lower. This is because the PV uh, energy, as I stated in the beginning uh, of, uh, of this section, we assume that the PV energy, it can be utilized by EV agents in the, EV agents in the system without paying any cost. So that's why this optimality gap is much lower. Now, in terms of fairness, we evaluate the performance uh, based on uh, by uh, based on an index between zero and one. If this uh, index value is close to zero, then that means that the system it's very unfair among its agents. But if this value is close to one, that we say that the system is very fair among its agents. As and as you can see, for the decentralized system, this value is very very close to one. So that means our system it's it takes fairness into account. For the large scale. We can see the system, it still converges within 30 simulation days of training. And then again, the next 30 days, we use them uh, to understand, to study the performance. And a key observation here is that we do not have any centralized um, uh, a row to describe the centralized result. This is because, as I stated earlier, the centralized system, it may lack scalability. And that is exactly what happened here. The centralized system, it was not able to converge when we had more than 10,000 agents in the system. But the decentralized system, it converged. And we can see that the constraints here, they are only violated in case of uncontrolled charging strategies. They are not violated for decentralized charging strategies. For cost, we can see there is no cost optimality because we do not know the reference here because we could not solve the problem using centralized approach. But we use the uncontrolled charging strategy as a reference here, so we measure the optimality in terms of cost reduction. And we see that if we are making a decentralized decision based on decentralized algorithm, then the cost is reduced. But if we are making decision based on the same decentralized algorithm with PV estimation, then the cost is even further reduced. And again, in such a big system, the fairness, it's still very close to one, so that means that the, that the system, it takes fairness into account. And here are the results for the electrical color current and for the voltage for one of the evaluation days. And as you can see, uh, the constraints, they are only violated if we follow uncontrolled charging strategies for both for electrical current and for voltages. But if we follow optimization-based strategies, for example, the centralized MILP optimization or the proposed decentralized optimization, they make sure that the constraints, they are satisfied. So to conclude, we, we we have we have these major conclusions uh, b b b based on based on the studies. The first major conclusion is that the rule-based AMAS it brings scalability to the system, but it may lack anticipative capa uh, capabilities, which can affect the performance of the system. Another big conclusion is that the decentralized combinatorial multi-arm bandit it can help in integrating anticipative capabilities in the agents. And what we do, we combine both of these theory to design a hybrid system. We call it a hybrid because the line and the EV, uh, line and the bus agents, they are just rule-based agents in the system, but the EV agents, they are learning agents in the system. And this design system, it's fully decentralized. It is scalable, as we just saw. It is near optimal. Again, as we just saw, it is very close to the centralized uh, deterministic MIP solution in terms of optimality. It is able to perform optimization in real time because the agents, uh, they are scalable, they, are, they, they, they can make decision in, 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 in very little time, so they are able to perform optimization in real time. They are model free, so in contrast to approaches like centralized MILF where we, they need uh, information of the whole electrical grid, they do not need the information of the whole ele electrical grid uh, to perform optimization because they observe uh, information from the uh, from their environment in terms of criticality, and they are fair. They take fairness into account among all agents in the system, and they are adoptable in a sense that even though we have studied uh, uh, th th this proposed methodology for EV smart charging, but they can be applied to study other different type of problem power system problems as well. Now the perspectives uh, of this study it includes that this developed system. It can be applied for to for different uh, smart grid control problems as well. 
for example, it can be applied to control more complex systems, for example, multi-energy system, where we not only have EVs in the system, but we have heat pumps in the system as well, and we have to make decision for uh, EVs as well as heat pumps in the system. We can apply this, uh, this development methodology on transmission networks as well, where they uh, can perform optimization for different processes, such as security, constraint, optimal power flow, and for capacity calculations as well. We can improve the functionality of the system for real life condition. By this, I mean that uh, in the developed system, there may be con constraint violation during the learning phase, which will not be ideal if we want to implement such a system in real life. So the functionality of this system, it can be improved. Furthermore, we assume that the communication among all agents in the system, they are synchronous. But in real life, we know such is not the case. So we can improve this uh, performance of the system under asynchronicity as well. We can perform detailed economic viability study of the system as well to see if the such, uh, such system, its application in real life, if it makes sense in terms of economic viability or not. And last but not the least, we can compare the developed algorithm uh, with other optimization strategies as well. For example, uh, ADMM and other standard RL algorithms, we can compare the performance of the presented system with these systems as well. And uh, yes, and that's it from my side. If you have any question, I'll be happy to answer that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's true. So, <coughs> could you consider uh, all kind of networks where it's not the ideal network or it's not the fit of this one? Yep. And what would be uh, the consequences on the behavior of your algorithm and the tools uh, you need to like for it? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you very much for this. It's, it's, it's a very good question, actually, because it relates to the perspectives of, the, of this thesis as well. 
So you're right, uh, the, the networks we are considering here, it's they, they are like this tree structure, they are radial. Um, but um, the tra th these are the distribution networks, but the transmission networks, they, they may not follow su such a tree structures because they are quite meshed. So if we apply our, um, our the, the, the proposed methodology for on, on such on 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 such a system, then I think the definition of uh, of the neighborhood of each type of agent it becomes even more critical because the the network it's not following a, a tree structure; it's more meshed. So we need to uh, spend more time on defining the uh, the 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 the, uh, the 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 neighborhood of each type of agent just to. Uh, give you a very simple equation from 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 the transmission network point of view. Uh, so, as I presented in the in the perspective, we do different sort of studies. For example, uh, uh, we do uh, capacity calculations as well. We are, we study in the long term how much the power system it can uh, the, the capacities it can it can interchange. Let's say between two countries, we do such uh, such type of studies for transmission si systems. And during those studies, we we what we do usually is uh, we, uh, we 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 assess the performance of the system under contingencies. So we say, okay, what happens if this element of the system it fails? What happens if this element of the system fails? And whenever, most of the times, whenever we are doing such studies, we there is some sort of definition that okay, let's say if this power generator it is failing, then it can have impact on these 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 prominent elements in the system. And if this uh, contingency is happening, then you need to monitor these elements in the system. So in such a way, if we apply, let's say, the proposed system for, for that application on transmission networks, we have to take into account, okay, we are sending this, uh, we are modeling this generator as an agent, and we have to define its neighborhood based on what sort of elements it can affect, uh, let's say, if a contingency happens. So we can apply it on different type of networks as well, which are not um, radial, uh, but we need to then sp we need to be then more careful about defining the neighborhoods of each agent. I think they become a more crucial part than what uh, I, I, I tackle during my thesis. Yeah, You're right. Y 
Yes, you can say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we can we can scale the range. Uh, it's uh, it's possible. It's possible actually. Um, uh, th th there can there can be scenarios where be because uh, in in the result I presented, it is just for one one study, right? The results it may change. For example, in the in 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 the, in the system, uh, let's say if for for, for the agent it it is was very hard uh, to predict the PV uh, because if they predict PV easily then it, the optimization problem it becomes much simpler to solve from an agent's perspective but if the this pb estimation it's much harder then it becomes a more difficult optimization problem and then for agents uh, then it, it may happen that the optimality the, the optimality gap is much larger compared to uh, compared to just w w uh, just we saw so it, it, it's true you have you, you have a good point that uh, this optimality gap it may not always be this uh, this little for if we simulate in all different environments it, re it really depends on uh, how how we uh, how we apply the system and wh where it is being applied. Yes. Yes. In the end. What's the case for the same class uh, in Cumbria with better performance measures to predict uh, to predict uh, uh, small P or like all the segments that we have? Yes. Um, still, uh, again, about the oh, so we were talking about the social choice. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. And the fairness part, yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, 
yes. Uh, for for, uh, for 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 me, the basic uh, reason to for 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 selecting this definition was uh, because we were trying to minimize the cost of uh, of each consumer in the system. So that was the main uh, part of the objective function: the, co the, the 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 daily cost which is paid by each EV agent. And uh, also, if we look at uh, the literature, the literature normally in the field of electrical engineering, uh, how they measure the fairness is in terms of cost, like how much uh, each EV agent uh, or each consumer has paid for charging in a certain amount of period. So that's why my my, my main motivation was to ensure that this cost it's minimized for each agent, but also the e uh, each EV agent, it pays more or less the same average charging cost during the day. So that's why I, 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 I selected this uh, parameter, you can say for fairness. And uh, you, you are absolutely right, we can, we, we, we can study uh, fairness in other aspects as well. But uh, during my thesis, I, I've only studied it here uh, as I presented in terms of cost for each EV agent. No, it's the same. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, the same. Uh, no, I, I, I tried with only one, so I tried with the, 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 the first sum to see if naturally it converges to an optimal solution or not, which was not true. So it was, it was converging, I mean, it was converging to an optimal solution, but that optimal solution was not fair among all agents in the system. So then we, we, we shifted towards adding this term where it ensures that the optimal solution is also fair. Uh, but but uh, you're right, we can uh, study different uh, weights of these terms as well. Um, yeah, it, it can be a perspective as well, but in case of uh, the simulation studies that I did, uh, when we added this fairness term, the optimality of when there was the, the, this no fairness term, it was not affected. So the optimal solution, it was the same, but the, opti uh, the fairness, it was added in the system. So that's why we just studied uh, them with the, with the same weights here. No problem. Uh, meeting the constraints, uh, you mean the constraints that we have uh, studied in the uh, for, uh, so for, uh, for the, so, so we have two, ty three types of constraints, right? The three main types. Let's say we have two main types of, the DSO and, and the presumer constraints, right? For the DSO constraints, uh, yes, there is no guarantee. Uh, I would say that, the, uh, that they will always be satisfied because as we see during the learning phase, they are violated as well. And uh, after the system converges, then uh, sure, they, they are not violated. But when, if the system, it changes very drastically, let's say if we add 50% of more new EV agents which are learning, then the constraints, they can again be violated in such a system. So no, for them, the, it is not guaranteed that DSO constraints that they, they would always converge. But for the presumer constraint, uh, the, the main constraint, which is uh, that at the time of departure, each EV agent will have um, a specific amount of state of charge. It uh, it, 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 it's always, uh, I mean, it's always satisfied because uh, if I show you the algorithm, uh, so what happens here is that uh, for each instant, the EV, each EV agent, it's picking a super arm, so which is the com combination of charging instances to charge during the day. And the number of instances it picks, uh, the, the, this number, it depends on how much it needs to charge to reach the specific uh, uh, amount of state of charge at the departure time. Uh, so, so it ensures that it picks that uh, amount of state of charge and then it reaches that state of charge value. So indirectly, we, we have enforced that the EGV agent, it will charge uh, during these number of instances. So again, it, make, it comes down to, uh, it may happen that EV agents, they are, they are charging during certain instances because they have to charge, they have to get that state of uh, charge, but then it may result in the violation of the DSO constraints. So uh, the number of 
yes. Uh, these are uh, so yeah uh, it's for the DSO as well because we can see we have cu current and voltage constraint violation uh, but uh, you can see uh, I have stated that we use the next 30 days after the conversions for evaluation so we wait for the system to converge to uh, <laughs> their, their optimal policy and then we evaluate what is the performance which uh, yeah, sure. We, we, we do have, we indeed have violations, especially during the training phase where all agents, they are learning. So, so because uh, this report subjected to our what happened? So in the perspective, I, for, for real life uh, impl yeah, conditions, yeah, I, I talked about that uh, we can improve uh, the system uh, that uh, in, in a way that they uh, obey these constraints at all instances. Ideally, I would say that even during the training, uh, the agents, they, uh, they should uh, respect these constraints. That would be an ideal situation <laughs> if, we, if we want to implement uh, them in real life. Yes. So, um, so you were saying you're up to the level of your decision? Yes. Mm -hmm. And by the time of this afternoon, you said the evaluation decision is finished. It seems very close to it. Yeah, it, it is. It, it is. It did hurt. Uh, you have to make a confirmation. Yes. Uh, in the evaluation decision. Is that in the works or not? Uh, that's actually a very good perspective uh, because uh, AMAS, it's naturally very cooperative where all agents, they are trying to cooperate with each other to, to achieve the goal of the, of the system. But uh, the problem we, we study usually in smart grids, uh, let's say charging problem, which is a lot of the time is, it can be simplified as a resource allocation problem. It's uh, the agents, they, uh, they, 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 <laughs> so th 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 their objectives, they are, they are quite uh, contradictory. It, 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 it's, it, it's true. And uh, that's why the notion of uh, the, 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 the equilibrium comes into play, where these agents, they, as they have different goals, so they need to compromise uh, on their goals as well to achieve some sort of equilibrium that would satisfy the system as a whole. Not, it, it may not be very the, the most opti optimal for each agent, but it would be ideally optimal for the whole system as a, as a, as a whole. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> and you say that uh, they need to be not evaluated. Yes. And uh, you are not evaluating. I would not say that so that the system is uh, it's uh, not uh, not because in the end you are uh, you are denying people to evaluate the agent and you don't let them. What what is it? Is, is it uh, is it compulsory? Uh, yes, it's true. I, it's true. Yeah. Uh, but I. So, so, so for, for this aspect, I would like to emphasize that it's monetary in a sense bec that, uh, that if you're trying to solve the problem using MILP, centralized MILP, then you need an accurate model of the power systems. If the model is not accurate, then your results, they will not be accurate. But for, the, for, for this decentralized AMAS based, based system, they do not need to know what is an accurate model of the power systems because the decision of each type of agent, it only depends on the, obs the, 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 the value of the observation it has from a sensor. Let's say there is a sensor on an electrical line, there is a sensor on an electrical bus, so it's a decision. It will only depend on 
the what is the value that I get from this electrical uh, this sensor on the electrical? It does not need to know if this line is connected to these buses and uh, etc. Yes, uh, yes. So, so in that sense, uh, you are right because we didn't we do need to know uh, the, the let's say the, the 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 rated value of 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 an electrical line or the uh, or the or for, for 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 a bus. So in that sense, yes, you are correct. We do need some sort of, of information from the from the power system model. It's true. Thank you for your answers. No, no problem. Thank you very much for a very interesting question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Always welcome. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, it's not, yes, I agree. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, it, it's it's again a very good point because I think it's very important to answer that questions if we want to implement such a system in real life, and that's why it's a, it's a big point in my perspectives as well, which is the detailed economic viability studies of of such a network. Because it's it, it's not easy to to assess how much uh, cost it will require to implement such a systems in terms of uh, the sensors, in terms of the communication uh, between them. So it can be a whole thesis in its uh, in itself. 
which is uh, which is true. Uh, but uh, I would say uh, a little uh, a, a little good point uh, that uh, of the research that we we have done in, in this thesis was that usually when we talk about a decentralized and multi-agent system, the communication cost it's usually very high because we have all of these different agents in the system. Let's say we have all these EVs in the systems and they are communicating with each other. Uh, right, so the EV agents, a lot of in a lot of decentralized systems as well, they communicate with each other too. So that increases the communication complexity as well. But in the in the in the presented system, uh, the EV agents they are not directly communicating with each other, which may lower uh, the communication cost of such a system because all of these EVs, if they communicate, let's say if we have 10,000 EVs in the system, they all are communicating with each other. Then it's it's a big communication cost, right? But if we have a system where all these 10,000 EVs, they are not directly communicating with each other, but they are indirectly observing uh, the impact of other agents uh, on, the, on, on the system, then it may reduce the cost uh, in terms of communication. But again, it will have to be assessed in more details if we, when we are studying the economic viability of, of such a system. The, the cost function, I agree, for, for like a realistic application, it can be modified a lot. We can consider different type of costs for, for, for implementation. It's, it's true, I totally agree with you. Okay. Uh, the next one, yes, yes. Uh, so in this uh, study case, uh, we uh, we uh, so I, I'll talk about for the large scale study. So so for 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 for, for the large scale system, uh, we did the simulation where uh, the tr all the transformers you see they can potentially be congested, and we saw what happens to the system. Uh, but the the, the 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 results that we have just discussed well, we have just discussed in that uh, simulation. Uh, only the tra uh, the grid transformer. Uh, we only uh, consider the congestion of only the grid transformer to see what is the Im uh, impact uh, on, on the system. Because when we are studying the uh, the case where each transformer was congested, then it it became a very local problem, which may be an easier optimization problem to solve. Uh, but we wanted to make it a more global problem where the the grid transformer is congested and all these EV agents they needed to optimize the system. Yes. Yes. Both in buses, yes. 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 Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, regarding the, uh, you mean the definition of the criticality? Yes. Um, I'm yeah, which line is, uh, I mean, I, I, I did not. No, uh, but when a line is congested, it sends a message to the EV agent. So the EV agent, it knows which, uh, wh which line is congested. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yeah. So, yeah, so, so it, yeah. 
and uh, uh, the, the, so, so, so this sort of problem we usually tackle it uh, through the definition of neighborhood. So, 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 so let's say there there is a line conge a line conge line congested. It can be because of a high import current or a high export current, but the direction of the message it, it will be different. For example, if it is an uh, high import current, then uh, the, the, the the EV. So, so, so w w we we can uh, modify the formulation. Uh, I understand I when we are designing the decentralized system, we can define the neighborhood in such a way that we can tackle all these different scenarios. But, but for the criti criticality, I think we can define a certain range. It can be between minus one or one. Or if we define it between zero and one, then we need to add some another in uh, some other necessary information in the communication messages between different agents. Uh, but yeah, but we, we we can. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. So if uh, so, so here I mentioned that it's environment criticality, right? So if we just memorize it as environment criticality for the moment, and if we go back to this uh, picture where we see line agent is communicating with bus agent, and then bus agent is generating environment criticality. So, so this uh, C R E uh, comma N V, it's it's this criticality which is coming from the bus agent to the EV agent. So it's it, it's a global criticality. So the line agent sends a criticality value to bus agent. The bus agent then generates the final environment criticality value. So it's a single value between negative one and one, which reflects the state of the environment. It carries information such as if the line is congested or not, if the bus is congested or not. It, this single value, it, can, uh, it carries this information. And then this single value, it is used here in the revo reward, this environment criticality. <coughs> Still not very clear. <laughs> yeah, we need to discuss. Yes. 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 It's it, it's it, it's it's so it's it's the value of it's equal to the value of the bus criticality. I, to summarize, it's equal to the value of the bus criticality in the in the, in the system. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 very simple actually. Yes, yes, I. Yes, it's 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 a good question. So, so, so when um, I I started my thesis, I started working on the AMAS path in the system. It was already developed. I I only. So there were some problems in the system, but the, the main architecture of the system, it was already designed. And the criticality value, it was between zero and one, which I think is usually the case for AMA system, where the agents, they are between zero and one. But uh, as you can see, we can have different types of uh, problems in, in the system. So if, if just for a bus agent, there uh, the, the bus agent, it can be critical because of over voltage, or it can be critical because of under voltage as well. And the action required by the EV agent for these two different situations, it's it's different for each EV agent. So in that system, what was happening, the, if the bus agent, it was critical, it was saying, okay, my criticality value is this, let's say one, and I have this issue, which is uh, under voltage or over voltage. 
And uh, I, I wanted to move from this architecture where the, in the communication message there are two parts. I just wanted to send this whole information just through one value. So I changed the range between negative one and one. So negative one indicates one sort of action from agent and one indicates uh, different sort of action from the agent. So like in <laughs> from my side, I try to optimize the, the, com the communication uh, between the agents. But it was purely a design choice, I think. <laughs> It's, uh, yes, I indeed it is. So, so we have a set of agents and we randomly sample uh, a, a number of agents which can charge simultaneously without causing congestion in the system. So it's uh, random sampling to, to, uh, to, uh, to ensure fairness. It's uh, so it, it is receiving the criticality of line agent actually. Okay. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's true. Yes. 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 For, for, for a local area, okay. Um, it's, it's, uh, Someone in the document you say it can be a time. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, yes, uh, I've understood your question. Maybe I just uh, go to the slide of this problem. Uh, okay, 
so here we when we mod when we were modeling the system, so we designed an AMA space system uh, where uh, we we had again different type of agents, and then there was BRP uh, agent class. So the each BRP agent it calculates its criticality, and this criticality it again depends on the real time mismatches. So it's true that maybe the uh, in the in the simulation results that we presented there were only one BRP, but the system itself it was designed to uh, it was it, it can be it can have multiple BRP as well. So there will be BRP agents. There can be multiple BRP agents in the system. And then each PRP, it has its BRP parameter, right? So each BRP agent, it will communicate its instantaneous criticality with the EVs that are present in its BRP parameter. To the same grid, yeah. yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so I, I understand. I understand your your question in that sense. And if we consider such, if we increase the complexity of such a case, then we may we may need to incorporate uh, communication among different BRPs as well. So here we present a system where there were only one BRP. Yes. Yes. So it means that you could not enable the communication, whatever the BRP, and the BRP is going to be a little bit uh, Yes, uh, it, it, it's true, but, uh, yeah, but, but we want to optimize the cost of the BRP yeah, as well, so yeah. we need to think for the BRP. Among the among those agents, yes, it's true. Uh, it's true, and it is happening in the in the system. So a line on they they, they are communicating with the EVs, irrespective of uh, which BRP it belongs to. Uh, you mean uh, let's say a line agent? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, of oh, of yeah, agents, different type of agents in the system, yes. It's <laughs> to, to, to adopt it for diff different BRPs. Yes. And uh, but regarding to your point, uh, because you mentioned several times, you have said you have used the, the, the war room statistics. I mean, uh, okay, yes. I don't fully agree with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, like, in terms of difference, statistics more than Yes. So it's more grid constraint violation. G grid constraint violation. I, I yes, I, I, I agree. Because you, you have yes, yes, I, I, I agree. Because you are running statistics. Yes. Yeah, it's only static, yes. Okay. But the idea is just, I'm not sure that uh, the balancing issue of the BRP yes. has to be linked with the real world problem. Okay. Because 
Yes. Great reinforcement, yes, true. Yes, yeah, 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 it's true. They, they are mutually exclusive, yeah. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Yes, uh, in that sense, yeah, it's more, uh, it's model free. That's uh, it's 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 it, it's it's a great question because it relates to the implementation cost. So 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 so. so. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, mean <laughs> I know I know the answer for sure. But uh, I mean, for example, we we have a grid. Uh, let's say on top where we have these different buses, and if I say if I want to install uh, sensors or every, uh, everywhere. Yes, I, I mean that's, that, that's just one proposal. So you need, you do not have to install at every, each bus in the network or each line in the network. Uh, you can identify some critical elements in the network which you want to monitor, and then you can I install uh, the sensor just only on those uh, elements to optimize the cost, basically, be, because you have to make a balance between uh, the cost and the. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just one example. Yeah. The DSOs, uh, they um, no, but the line agents or the bus agents, they they come under so because line and buses they are under DSOs, right? Uh, so the line agents and, and the bus agents they comes uh, they come under DSO as well in the, in the proposed system. So how they design the criticality it depends on the on the design of the uh, on DSO specifications. Let's yes. So that it can be function, yes. Yeah, because it represents uh, the signal that the, B, uh, the DSO wants to communicate to the EV consumer. In our case, we the only decision only EVs. EVs, yes. EVs. They are the only decision making variable in the system.
it's 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 a good question. It's a very good question. From sensors, yeah. It, it's true. <laughs> it, can, it, it can happen, but uh, it's it, it, it's a good perspective. It's a good perspective study. But for the moment, we we consider very idealistic scenario in terms of uh, communication. So so we could assume that all the agents they are communicating synchronously. There are no delays, and also the information they are communicating with each other. They there are not any errors in the estimation of the, uh, those information. So for, for, for the studies, we, we do not consider such uh, errors in the system, but it can be a very good perspective before if we, if we want to apply the system for, to a real life network. Yes. But we could imagine controlling electric power for the general purpose. Power electric. Power electric. Yeah, yes, yes, it's, po it's, it, it's true. It's, it's, it's possible. Uh, it would, um, I mean, uh, it, it depends. Um, it depends on uh, what you want to do. If you want to do it for generators, for different type of generators than EV, then you need to design uh, an agent uh, for to control that agent, basically. Uh, but uh, I think it can be controlled in the same way, uh, the, uh, in the same way that uh, how we control active power in, in, in the in the system. So it should not be fairly complex. So it should, it, 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 I wouldn't say it would be a long time perspective, but it can be a short term perspective to implement uh, reactive power control capabilities in the in the system. But uh, then, I mean, if, if we are controlling uh, reactive power, then we need to consider uh, costs related to reactive power control as well. We need to consider bar compensator, et cetera. We need to... Yes, for the, yeah, yeah. So it, then it becomes a whole perspective. Uh, it, it, it's true. <laughs> we uh, we had that problem in, in the initial AMA system uh, because there were delays in the communication uh, between agents. So we, so what was happening in the initial AMA system? Each agent it was making uh, a decision at each second, and the communication between two successive agents was also at one second. So there were some delays uh, of messages uh, b between different agents. Yes, and, and and when we, we had this sort of trouble uh, because the agents they were reacting late. So some agents they were reacting very early, which were close to the congested agents, and the agents which were let's say at at the end of the of the tree they were reacting very late when the line was stable. So they were causing oscillations in the system. So for that we uh, we introduced the, that memory based criticality term in the in the in the system. But still, it's uh, I wouldn't say it's it's. It can remove the problem completely, and for that we made an assumption during these studies that the communication among these agents, uh, there are no as asynchronicity in the in the in, in the system, so that we can avoid such uh, oscillatory behavior. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, it's here.
Yes. Yes, power factory, yes. Yes, yes. So the meter, the meter is covered. Yes. So when you choose, when you give a meter to the reader, and then it, you don't need to see the difference to use the difference between the gas and the meter. Yes. Okay, okay, yeah, it's true. Uh, maybe it was not very clear in the manuscript, but uh, I will maybe put it as a note. But we didn't do exactly this. We did uh, the opposite of it, which was we, uh, uh, we, we got the solution through MILP and we uh, implemented it, uh, we uh, simulated it in Power Factory and we saw the difference between two. So, so, so the milk solution, the centralized milk solution, and simulated in Power Factory that what is the difference between uh, the solution we obtained and what is the difference of uh, the effect of non real life nonlinearities. And the difference uh, we saw it was very little. It was uh, um, it's for like very very little difference between the, these two profiles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is not very low regarding the reluctance. Yeah, yeah, it's very low What is the impact on, on, of this change? Yes. And you have uh, the same idea, the pair matrix. Yes. You need the, the difference of choice between, like so daily different choice uh, between different uh, It's daily average. So it's char charging for per unit because uh, the char total charge requirement of each EV, it can be different. Uh, yes, so, yes. So, so we can, I can get per unit. So, so per unit. Per, uh, so I divided by uh, like, uh, so 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 it it pays this, this much cost and it charges for the, uh, like uh, it charges uh, the so it paid this much cost and then it call uh, the total energy it uh, uh, the total power it charges yes. Yeah yes. Yeah exactly so it's like uh, we we divide the cost by the the kilowatt hour uh, energy it needs to be charged. Uh, I, I, I can you please repeat your question? So yes, it's yes, yes. Yes, in chapter four, it should be. It is, uh, no, uh, the, uh, so at the beginning of, uh, let's say chapter four and chapter two, I define the problem. So uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, like uh, a centralized or decentralized way. I just define the original mathematical formulation of the problem. 
whenever I, I'm trying to study the new problem. So in chapter four, I just uh, give the formulation, the original formulation. Uh, it's, uh, I, I use the criticality factors when uh, uh, we define uh, a, a system which is based on AMAS. So I use the criticalities only in chapter two and then uh, in chapter five. Yes, yes. It's a good point, uh, but uh, I, 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 can, I, I can add it, but I didn't, I didn't want to be unfair among picking which <laughs> agent. Uh, <laughs> if there were like two, three uh, EVs in the system, I would have put, but there were 10,000, so I didn't want to be unfair to pick one. But I can I, I can add in the my final manuscript some EV profiles so the reader it can get. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, so it's no, no, it's, uh, it's fine. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's 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 a very good question. <laughs> I think because uh, it was in my mind as well. Uh, so maybe to 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 talk uh, to add one more point to, to the stationarity aspect. Uh, you, you raised very valid points. These are some of the information that can affect the the decision of each EV agent. 
uh, but, but just to add uh, another parameter that can affect uh, which was in my mind, it was uh, how the power system is evolving with time. Uh, because we, we in, in, my, in the simulation studies that I presented, in the beginning, there were certain number of EVs. And when I was evaluating, it was the same number of EVs in the, EVs in the system. But it may not be the case in real life. So we will have new EVs in the system. And this can be a, 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 this can be a change in the system as well, which can, which can be important uh, to, uh, to to study. But uh, to give uh, you an answer on the perspective, how can we incorporate such information uh, in the in the in the proposed model? So it was uh, it's a relatively uh, simpler model where we use. Uh, simply combinatorial multi arm model for decision making but if let's say if we have these extra information available for example what would the, if we have any pv forecast or we have information related to what day is it uh, what will be the consumption of the household etc we can use this sort of information as contextual information in the model so we can formulate not just uh, a simple linear combinatorial multi arm method we can uh, include this information as contextual information so the EV agent it considers this information as well while picking uh, the best estimated super arm during the day. Uh, yes, uh, the, the combinatorial, uh, uh, the adversarial uh, uh, bandit based algorithm for for combinatorial multi arm bandit. It's 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 very it's it's a very interesting domain because uh, contrary to the Thompson sampling uh, combinatorial multi arm bandit, the the the, the adversary adversarial based bandit. Uh, they come with uh, a limit on the uh, an upper limit on the on the regret, which can which can be uh, which can be a good um, uh, parameter to consider when looking for real life implementation. Uh, but I think it would need to be studied more because for, for during my uh, thesis, what I just did was I just. Uh, uh, try to evaluate the performance of, of the adversarial based uh, CMAP just for one simulation case study. Uh, but I think it would be crucial to, to further study it to see how it works. But it can be an, 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 an interesting approach for application. It's um, so, so 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 in, in the in, in the in the in the beginning we 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 we, we, we wanted to uh, to 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 indicate uncertainty in the in the decision of each EV agent regarding uh, uh, regarding uh, the estimated reward for each instant of the of the day. So so in the beginning we we. Uh, we thought that it can be a good uh, model because it has already been, uh, if we look at the literature, it has already been tested uh, for a different application, which is for uh, to optimize the communication uh, communication networks. And it showed very promising results for, for, uh, for, for that application compared to other models for such as adversarial bandit. So we started with the Thompson sampling for the learning strategy. And uh, then we had time, so we in included other prominent uh, strategies as well. Uh, UCB based and EXP3 based, but uh, there are like a lot of other strategies as well, which we can, which can be very interesting to uh, for, 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 for study. Yes. In uh, what could be the interest? Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, yes. There, 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 yes, there can be many interesting scenario. Uh, for example, uh, um, to, to, to model a worst case scenario where we say that uh, the information that an EV agent is observing from, from the environment, let's say a sensor, we, w we want to model the scenario, we will say that the, that information is not correct. So in an adversarial case, the algorithm, I think in my opinion, it would be better uh, to handle uh, such scenario compared to a Thompson sampling uh, based where it considers that the information that we uh, that I'm observing from the environment is fair. There is no adversary playing against me, but an adversary bandit, it consider that there can be a potential adversary playing me. So there is the, this false uh, nature of information. It can be better considered in such class of algorithms. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you very much, Keith, for your kind words. It was very pleasant for me to work with you as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you again very much for your kind words and it was uh, as i said before with Keith, it was very nice working with you all of you because uh, you were not very helpful only with, uh, with with my thesis or professional work but also in terms of uh, my personal life when i was new here in when uh, you helped me a lot in in getting settled here in doing all my administrative procedures which is even longer for international students, and uh, obviously finding a, uh, a place here <laughs> in the event. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. 
Merci, merci. Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, can you? Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> uh, it's uh, no. <laughs> it was not for, for the purposes. I think it was more for uh, for for me. Like uh, I wanted to show that uh, this manuscript, maybe some reader it, it will find uh, some reader will find it very good. But still, there is room for improvement. We can we can always evolve. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so I have a question for uh, Charyal. Um, so you talked about um, uh, combinatorial multi-armed uh, bandit. Uh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Maybe you can pretend to be me now so that you can come in. Take some food. Wait. <laughs> okay. <coughs> you can, uh, we can check if it's live or not. But now maybe when the jury comes, you can be me and then you accept your doctorate. Huh? You can pretend to be me yeah. when they will come and then you will accept. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm a doctor now. I mean, uh, thanks to my <laughs> mom, <laughs> thanks <laughs> to my dad. <laughs> it works. <in. laughs> Bonjour, maman. Je passe à la télé. <laughs> we, we are going to come.
échanges avec les membres du jury. Vous avez montré une étude complète des nombreux sujets abordés, que ce soit les approches multi-agents, les techniques d'apprentissage par renforcement, l'optimisation des temps passés, les réseaux de distribution. Donc, euh, les questions ont également porté sur les défis d'implémentation des méthodes mises en œuvre. Il a tout, vous avez toujours eu le souci de répondre de manière pertinente. Pour l'ensemble de ces raisons, unanimes, Compulsory to do in French? Uh, no, I think it's in English. No, no, it can be done uh, in French or in English. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I. I do, I do get it in English. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I checked all the rules before. <laughs> so yeah, uh, 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 they have an official English text as well. So in the presence of all my peers, with the completion of my doctorate in electrical engineering, in my quest of knowledge, I have carried out demanding research, demonstrated intellectual rigor, eth ethical reflection, and respect for the principles of research integrity. As I pursue my professional career, whatever my chosen field be, I pledge to greatest of my ability to continue to maintain integrity in my relationship to my knowledge, in my methods, and in my results. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, first of all, I would like to thank every one of you for participating in my PhD defense, and uh, I would like spe I would like to extend my special thank to all the jury members for coming all the way here for reviewing my manuscript, for reviewing my research. Uh, for making uh, valuable contributions in it as well by through your questions or your remarks as well. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to especially thank my, 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 my thesis supervisors and co-directors. Uh, I remember before I started my thesis, uh, one, one, of the, one of the students, uh, he, he gave me an advice that selecting your thesis subject is as important as selecting your thesis supervisors or directors. And I really thank that person because he was correct. Uh, you, uh, you, you have made the thesis much easier, <laughs> in my opinion, because you were always there to support me whenever I had questions. You were there to answer those, those questions. Whenever I needed any sort of help, you were there, especially on, because whenever I needed uh, to, to transport something, uh, her car, she and her car was there. They were driving me every summer. We used to go uh, take the computing machine to my home and then come back. Thank you very much for that, for Hamid, 
uh, he was always available to answer my questions, no matter how dumb they were <laughs> or how simpler they were. He was always there and he always answered, uh, answered them with patience for he, um, even though we have met only a couple of times, uh, but still it was a very pleasant experience working with him because whenever I needed uh, uh, some, some help from him on the topic of AMA especially, he was always there to help me. Thank you very much. And uh, maybe last but not the least, uh, I would like to thank Rafael because I think uh, he, he played a great role in making this thesis possible because the midway we were still struggling, trying to find out directions where we can, uh, where we can go and we can pursue, but uh, he, was, uh, he, he was a great addition. Uh, he, he told me a lot about Bandit and I would like to again uh, thank you very much for your one week uh, stay in Danio at Orange Labs. It was, it was, maybe it's, it's, it's on a bit of exaggeration, but it was really life changing because I learned a lot uh, on bandits and uh, in, in this field as a whole during those, uh, during that one week. So thank you very much. Okay, I'll be saying, no, 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 I mean, I, I just wanted to confirm yeah. anything to say, no, okay, so uh, we are done here, we, we have a pod in the faculty room, and you all are welcome to join there, you all are welcome to have a coffee or a juice with me, and uh, we can talk, <laughs> thank you very much, yes, yes, uh, who will take the photo? <laughs> I'll take the photo.